episode, well, we're going to hear another catalogue of errors and failures. And that exactly is what happened. And so I'm not surprised uh, about anything I heard. It's uh, like with the other two volumes, regrettable that so many mistakes were made, so many failings happened. Um, but I'm not the kind of person who um, is uh, tapping into anger or a, f a feeling that I need to retaliate or I need to start hating and get frustrated. I don't want people, you know, to be punished for it because the people who made mistakes and, and had, fa you know, carried out failings, I'm sure nobody did it on purpose um, and it's human nature. Um, and uh, those people have to live with those failings and those mistakes for the rest of their lives. Fegan Murray is the mother of Martin Het, who was killed in the bombing at Manchester Arena. Fegan, um, goodness, this is such a long haul for you and for other relatives. How are you? Uh, yeah, um, still in one piece. Um, it's been a long haul. Uh, you know, it's, it's volume three is finally finished. And uh, I am kind of relieved that we've come to the end of this chapter. And I say chapter because that isn't the end of our journey. People often say to me, oh, well, you can draw a line under it now. You have closure now. And now the volume three is done. There'll never be closure. And there's never a line to be drawn under anything because, you know, we lost our child. And uh, uh, certainly for me personally, I've got a Martin-shaped hole in my soul that that will always stay there. And we have an abyss of grief that will never go away. Um, so, yeah. But I'm relieved volume three is out of the way now. And the fact that the inquiry has found that the security services could have done more to prevent this happening. I mean, we, we obviously don't know whether, in fact, that might have happened. They might have been able to stop it taking place. But it must have been particularly tough to hear that. Yeah, um, but to be honest with you, um, on the way into Manchester today, I saw thought, well, we're going to hear another catalogue of errors and failures. And that exactly is what happened. And so I'm not surprised uh, about anything I heard. It's uh, like with the other two volumes, regrettable that so many mistakes were made, so many failings happened. Um, but I'm not the kind of person who um, is uh, tapping into anger or a, f a feeling that I need to retaliate or I need to start hating and get frustrated. I don't want people, you know, to be punished for it because the people who made mistakes and, and had, fa you know, carried out failings, I'm sure nobody did it on purpose um, and it's human nature. Um, and uh, those people have to live with those failings and those mistakes for the rest of their lives. Um, I guess that can't be easy um, and they need to face themselves every morning in the mirror. That is, I'm sure, very tough to deal with. You are, you're a remarkable woman and I know you've challenged a lot, uh, channeled a lot of your energy into doing much more to enhance safety uh, at events, a little bit like pop concerts and other big occasions. Is that your, your reason to, to keep on going in, in memory of Martin? Well, it kind of helps me with my grieving process, I guess. Um, but um, I just, you know, when I realised the bomber was only 22 years old, uh, this is three days after the attack, I realised it's the first time I saw a picture of him. His young age shocked me so much that I felt very um, sort of um, surprised that somebody so young would do it. So initially I started talking to school children, which I still do, and up to now I've seen about... 25,000 young people um, and I educate them about the dangers of online radicalization, the signs to look out for, the, the methods and um, uh, tactics recruiters online use and how to be, how to look after themselves more online and if they were in danger of being radicalized, how to access support. And the other thing I have been doing is obviously uh, uh, campaigning for Martin's Law, which is um, a legislation that we've proposed to make venues safer. And that has now started about four years ago. It's now come to the stage where I spoke with Suala Braverman in December uh, and three days after that meeting with her and the security minister, Tom Tugendhat. Um, I had a phone call of Rishi Sunak at home and they all gave me the green light for it. But that means uh, that the legislation is now going through 
uh, several um, parliamentary processes and hopefully within the next 12 months or so the legislation will actually become an act and uh, therefore in future people will be much safer well, because the legislation mandates security at venues.